Hey guys, Miss Ross here to teach science for this week. This week we actually have two different science subjects to learn about. So you can choose to do one or the other um, project, or you can choose to do them both. But I would love for you to listen and learn about all of them, regardless of which project you choose to do at the end of this video. So. The first one that we're going to learn about this week is rocks. Now, you might not think that there's a lot to learn about rocks, but that would be wrong. Rocks are really cool, and I'm going to show you a video about how different types of rocks are formed and how you can tell the difference between them. So here we go. Listen attentively and learn some about rocks. Hi guys, Squeaks and I are checking out our rock collections. Ooh, that's a nice one. Now, some people might wonder why we collect rocks. I mean, a rock's a rock, right? Well, you've probably noticed that rocks don't all look the same. Some of them have speckles or little bits of what look like glitter, and some of them are just one color. And rocks don't feel the same either. Some are coarse and gritty, and some are smooth. It turns out there are thousands of different rocks. So you could build a really big rock collection if you try. But among all those thousands of rocks, scientists organize them into three main groups. These groups are called igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. And each group is based on how rock actually forms in nature. That's right, everything comes from somewhere, even rocks. For example, igneous rocks form when magma, the liquid rock under the surface of the earth, hardens. You know about magma, it can erupt from volcanoes. Once magma comes above ground, it's called lava. And when this hot, melted rock cools and hardens, whether it's above ground, like on the side of a volcano, or deep underground, it becomes igneous rock. Now, sedimentary rock forms when other rocks break down. This happens a lot, actually, all the time, but it happens really slowly. Sedimentary rocks often form in water because they're made of pressed together parts from other rocks that were broken up and carried away by things like rivers and streams. As a river passes over the land, it wears down the rock beneath it into tiny broken pieces called sediment. Eventually, all that sediment settles to the bottom of the water and builds up. And over time, pressure pushes down on the sediment, squeezing the pieces together tighter and tighter until they form a new rock, a sedimentary rock. Finally, metamorphic rocks are rocks that have gone through a big change. Remember when we talked about caterpillars turning into butterflies? That process is called metamorphosis. And metamorphosis just means changing shape. And that's exactly what these metamorphic rocks have done. They change when they're exposed to things like really high heat or really intense pressure or sometimes both. This usually happens deep within the earth, where rocks can get squished, bent, folded, but not melted. So those are the three main kinds of rocks. But how can you tell one from the other? It can be pretty hard, but sometimes we can find clues in the rock about how it formed, from how it looks or feels. So what do you guys think? Do you wanna play rock detective? Okay, here's our first mystery rock. What kind do you think it is? You see those bendy stripes? This rock looks like it's been stretched and squeezed. It must have gone through quite a change. And in fact, intense heat and pressure gave this rock its squiggly bands. Because it went through a big change inside the earth, it must be a metamorphic rock. Now, what about this one, rock detectives? Check out those layers, kind of like a big cake. Those are layers of sediment that were put down by rivers and oceans over millions of years. Since you can see it's made up of smooshed up layers of sediment, can you guess what it is? It must be a sedimentary rock. Okay, just one more. This stuff hardly looks like rock at all. Those big goopy loops of black rock look like they're practically melting. And at one time, they were. They were made when lava from a volcano spilled into the ocean and solidified into rock. And since this rock came from lava or magma, you know it's, that's right, igneous rock. So now you know, there's more to rocks than meets the eye. They all have different colors and textures. Each one has a story to tell. 
a story of how it formed. So the next time you're out for a walk, keep your eyes open for the most interesting rocks and play Rock Detective on your own. And if you find a rock that you think is especially cool, send us a picture at kids at scishow.com. We'd love to see them and we'll see you next time. Okay, so that is the three different types of rocks. We have sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous rock. Now, it's kind of tricky to tell the difference between those three types of rocks. So if you can't quite decide what your rock is, that's okay. In kindergarten, it's all about exploring and finding rocks that are interesting to look at that you might could figure out how it was made. So I went on a walk today and I found some rocks. Now, they're not maybe as interesting as you might could find, but I wanted to find rocks that were different sizes and colors. So I found this rock. It's very sharp. When I'm feeling it, it feels very sharp. Like maybe it was broken off from a bigger piece of rock. And it's, it's rough on one side and kind of smooth on the other side. This one is really small, but it's different color. Do you see that? It's, copper. It's a copper colored rock. So I know that that must be made out of something different than this one, don't you think? Because they're different colors. I also found this big chunk of something. Now, if you look really closely at this one, it looks like it's made up of all different kinds of rocks, kind of like a sedimentary rock. So, I want you to go on a walk and find some rocks. I want you to investigate those rocks and compare them kind of like I did. Is it really rough or is it smooth on the side? I'm gonna send you guys this rock investigation paper so that you can draw and investigate your rocks. So I drew my rock on this top. I drew all three of my rocks right here. I didn't have all the colors, so I just made sure they were similar shapes. It says, is your rock smooth or rough? Most of my rocks were pretty rough, right? Except maybe this one was kind of smooth. So you can write if it's smooth or rough. Right here it says, is it shiny or dull? Were any of my rocks shiny? No, I wish I found a shiny rock, but I didn't. So I'm gonna say dull. And then what color is your rock? I said gray and copper, because those were the two colors I found. Now, what else did you observe about your rock? I put, it might be a sedimentary rock because I saw different kinds of rocks in this one. It might be a sedimentary rock, so I put that right here. If you found out something different about your rock, maybe you could tell me where you found it or what you think it was made out of. Any of those things can go right here. Now, this one says, how much does your rock weigh? Now, I didn't have a balance at my house, but I know another way to weigh something is just using my hands. And I decided that my rock feels about the same weight as my TV remote. So I wrote that my rock weighs the same as this TV remote. See if you can find something that weighs about the same as your rock. And that is our rock project for the week. So, as I said, we have two different science subjects for this week that was all about rocks. And now we're gonna move on to magnets. So, magnets are really cool. We're gonna look at a video that tells us a lot about magnets and what makes them stick together and what makes them stick to other things. Let's take a look. All right, listen attentively as you hear all about magnets. Ivan, what are you doing? I love soup so much. I'm trying to get this can to come to me just by thinking really hard about it. I wouldn't spend too much time on that experiment. Wait, are you tricking me with magic? Nope, not magic. 
It's science! This is a magnet, Izzy, and it can pull some kinds of objects towards it without even touching them. What kinds of objects? I'll show you. You just saw it move the soup can. That's because the soup can is made of steel. And steel has a metal called iron in it. And magnets work great on iron. Metal with iron, huh? Hey, it sticks to these metal scissors. But magnets won't pull this plastic cup or rubber band. But it sure likes this snail. See, if something has iron in it, a magnet can pull on it. Hey, why doesn't it stick to this penny? It's made of metal. You're right, but a penny is made of a metal called copper. And magnets don't work on copper. Let's try something else. Hi, Rascal. Hey, those button thingies on Rascal's collar must have iron in them, too. Hey, Rascal took my magnet. <laughs> it's okay, Izzy. I've got plenty of others. In fact, magnets come in all different shapes, sizes, and strengths. But no matter the shape, size, or strength, every magnet has poles. Poles? Like a flagpole? No, different kinds of poles. A pole on a magnet is where the magnetic force is the strongest. And get this, every magnet has two poles. On one end is the North Pole, and on the other end is the South Pole. A pole on each end. Yep. Now try touching the ends together and see what happens. Together. That's because opposite poles of magnets pull each other together. We say that they attract each other. The north pole of one magnet attracts the south pole of the other magnet. Now flip one around and try touching them again. <sighs> oh, whoa, that's cool. They don't want to touch. That's because the same poles push each other away. The same poles? I'm confused. See, the north pole of one magnet will always push away the north pole of another magnet if they come too close. Same thing happens with the South Poles. <clears throat> nope, that's not going to happen. When two magnets push each other away, we say they repel each other. So how did you do the soup can trick? That's what's so cool about magnets. They can pull or push objects without even touching them. The magnet I was using was strong enough to attract the soup can through the thin tabletop. When I moved the magnet under the table, it moved the soup can on top of the table. That's really cool, Ivan. So you see, Izzy, it wasn't magic at all. It was magnets. Then how do you explain that? <laughs> oh, rascal! <laughs> All right, so how cool is that? They made that soup can move with a magnet without even touching it. Now, in your science bag, in the brown bag that you got from school, you have some magnets. Now, our magnets look a little different than their magnets, but they work exactly the same. If you notice, they want to attract. Now, if we flip them around the other way, let's see if that works. They don't want to stick together this way, only this way. So that means that these magnets attract this direction and they repel the other direction. Now, I want you to try to find some things around your house that your magnet will stick to. Now, I had some ideas. So, First, I was thinking maybe this earring, okay? This earring is metal, so maybe it would stick to a magnet, you think? It doesn't stick, why not? Maybe this earring is not made of iron 
or cobalt or nickel, the three types of metals that attract a magnet. These earrings are made out of silver and they don't attract a magnet. Let's try something else. What about my hair tie? What do you think about that? You think that's gonna attract? Let's see. Nope. It's not even metal, it doesn't work. Let's try these scissors. You think it'll work? It did. What about this can? Oh, doesn't work on the can. Hmm, what about these measuring spoons? Let's try that. It does work. I want you to try to find some iron, cobalt, and nickel in your house and see if the magnet sticks to anything in your house and then you'll know that it must be iron, cobalt, or nickel. Now, we're gonna do a cool project of our own, kind of like the soup can in that video. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna make your own track. Now, you have a paper plate in your bag. You can use crayons or markers, whatever you have. I want you to make a track like this on a paper plate. Now, you have another paper plate in your bag and I want you to use that to make a car. What I did is I just cut it out of another paper plate. I drew a car and my car is pink and purple because I love those colors. I drew this car and then I cut it out and I stuck a magnet to the back of the car. Now, I got a little piece of my paper plate that I cut out, or you could use a, a popsicle stick, and I folded it so it'd be a little sturdier, and I put another magnet on this paper. Now, this is what's gonna help our car go around the track, almost like magic. So let's see. Now, if I put my car on the track, I want to put this on the back so that it sticks through, so that it attracts, all right? And then you can drive your car without even touching it. Look, I'm gonna make sure it's, there it goes. Look, we get to drive our car all the way around just by using a magnet. How cool is that? So you have some magnets in your bag that you can use to make your own magic magnet track. So once again, you can choose to make the magnet track or to do the rock investigation, or you can choose to do both. I can't wait to see your amazing projects for this week. I love you and I miss you. Have a great week.